Okay, um, we're going to get to what eventually causes global warming or what uh, many people believe causes global warming. But first, we need to talk about uh, what happens when you burn a fossil fuel. When you burn a fossil fuel, you basically take a carbon that's attached to a hydrogen. And they're not really usually that simple. For example, a very simple fossil fuel would have um, four hydrogens off of it, like this. Um, and now there's other fossil fuels we could replace, for example, this hydrogen uh, with a carbon, and that's a different kind of fossil fuel. And it doesn't matter what, what they are um, or how many carbons and hydrogens for our sake, um, but basically it's carbon and hydrogen, hydrocarbons. And what happens is when you uh, take a hydrocarbon, or a, um, and hydro, fossil fuels are hydrocarbons, and you react them with um, oxygen, uh, what will happen is these bonds here will break and the carbon will attach to an oxygen and actually um, the hydrogen, takes two of them though, will react with the oxygen and what we get out of that is heat, that's what causes an explosion when you catch gas on fire okay, uh, or burn it in the piston of your car, so you get heat out of it um, when you break those chemical bonds um, and what will happen is those atoms will rearrange themselves or those particles will rearrange themselves so you end up with carbon dioxide and water. So those are the two things that come out of a tailpipe of your car, the two main components. Right? Um, or anytime you burn a fossil fuel, burn wood in your stove, same thing happens. Okay. Um, now, it's this carbon dioxide that most scientists would say is responsible for uh, potential global warming. So it's actually the CO2 here that is responsible. So now I'm going to talk about, in a minute, how that carbon dioxide is responsible or possibly responsible for global warming. However, before I do that, it would be better to start with what a greenhouse actually is because our our earth and that carbon dioxide acts like a greenhouse. So let's just talk about a greenhouse. Greenhouse is where you would put plants, for example. So we'll make a greenhouse. Now that house is actually clear glass or plastic and we need some sunshine. So let's uh, cause some sunshine here. And sun comes down usually in visible light, light that we can see. Now it comes down in other forms too, but we're going to focus on the visible light here. So that's light you can see. And what happens is that visible light will go right through the glass in your greenhouse and it will hit the soil. And that visible light will get absorbed into the soil and heat it up. Okay. Now, what happens though is when the soil heats up, it also gives energy from the sun back out. But the thing is, the sunlight the visible sun light changes before it goes back out. It turns into a different kind of light called infrared light and it's shaped differently. So infrared light has a different shape when it goes back out and the thing is it doesn't get through glass, clear glass and plastic very well and so it gets stuck inside of the greenhouse and that's basically energy being stuck and that, of course, increases the temperature of the greenhouse compared to outside. So, a quick recap. Visible light that you can see comes in and it goes through the greenhouse just fine. That energy gets absorbed into the soil. It gives the energy back out, but it doesn't go back out as visible light. It goes back out as infrared, and the infrared cannot get through the greenhouse very well. That causes an increase in temperature. Now, how does that relate to the Earth? Well, this is how it relates to the Earth. Um, volcanoes and other sources uh, put carbon dioxide into our atmosphere long before we were tinkering with things. And so uh, that represents our atmosphere here. Okay? And there's other gases, but it's carbon dioxide, the one we're going to be concerned with today. So uh, there's oxygen, nitrogen, other gases. So this would represent our atmosphere here. And again, the sun gives out light. Uh, you can't see yellow here, so let's find a light that you can see. So it gives out visible light that you can see. 
and it goes right through carbon dioxide just fine. And let's draw, how about, four rays of sunshine that hit the Earth. And those rays are going to heat up the Earth. Okay, It's going to get absorbed into the Earth. But then it's going to eventually radiate that energy back out to space. But again, just like in the greenhouse, it's going to change shape, and it's now going to be in the form of infrared. And the thing is, if infrared gets hit by or hits too many carbon dioxide particles, it actually traps it and bounces it back just like our greenhouse did. So in my scenario here, you might have some that escape, okay, make it back out to outer space, and some that hit carbon dioxide and get trapped. And here's another one that made it back out. So in my example here, I have two rays of infrared that made it out and two that stayed trapped. Okay? And those trapping of the infrared rays is basically what keeps our planet warm and livable in the first place. And if it wasn't for that carbon dioxide, uh, the planet would be actually too cold. And if we had too much carbon dioxide, it would be too warm because we'd start trapping too much heat. So uh, along comes humans starting to burn fossil fuels oh, about 150 years ago or so. And so we started putting oops, uh, cars. It's my car. Of course, it emits CO2. Um, smokestacks for coal plants, of course, emit CO2. So we started uh, putting CO2 into the atmosphere. It rates, sorry, putting, started putting CO2 in the atmosphere at uh, rates that we've never done before. So what happens is, let's draw my four original CO2s. Here's one, here's two, here's three, and here's four. So here's my carbon dioxide before we started driving cars and uh, pushing out fossil fuels burning fossil fuels, but now we start burning them and we get more and more CO2. So I'm going to draw some additional CO2s. How about I use blue to draw some extra ones? CO2, 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 CO2. And just like before, uh, sunlight can come in and it, and it will actually go through the CO2 pretty easily. And draw four rays coming in. Okay, and then it goes back out, but now there's more of a chance of the infrared that can't get through the CO2 as easily to get trapped. Now, in reality, all four are not going to be trapped, but more would be trapped, and so I'll just draw all four for the sake of illustration. So you're trapping more energy here in our atmosphere, which of course causes an in increase in heat of our planet, or at least that's the idea. Now, there are, we're not going to have time in this class to fully debate whether or not global warming is happening or not, but that's the idea of, of what global warming is. Um, and if you do some research, you'll see if you look up anti-global warming arguments, you'll see people say it's not actually the CO2 that's causing, um, it, it probably is slightly increasing the temperature, but you'll see people say that it's activity of the sun and other arguments. Um, like I said, we're not going to have time to debate that this year, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what global warming or the idea of it is.